In the previous section, we saw that when an interrupt occurs, there will be some save state pushed onto the stack. And then when an interrupt returns, that save state is popped back off so that the processor can get back to whatever it was doing. To understand how the stack works in particular for this save state, we need to learn a little bit about something called tasks. So scattered throughout the Intel documentation, you will see references to things called tasks. And that was a hardware mechanism designed to support multitasking, allowing the processor to save information and context switch between you know, different processes or different tasks. But like many things with the original design, like segmentation, tasks weren't really being used for its intended design purpose. So during the x86-64 extensions, uh, it was largely removed from the architecture. But there is one element that is still used, and that is the task state segment. And this actually must be used by an operating system because it is still architecturally baked in that it is consulted upon uh, stack switching that occurs for interrupts. So the information about tasks start with a task register. And this looks very similar, if not identical, to the LDTR, the Local Descriptor Table Register, because it has a 16-bit segment selector. And for all intents and purposes, that's the only thing you can actually access under normal circumstances. And then there's the hidden portion to the register, which gets filled in from some table, the GDT, which we now know about. And this is going to have a base and a limit of the task state segment uh, just filled in from the table. So to set this register, there is a instruction LTR, load task register, which installs the 16-bit segment selector, and STR, which will allow you to write out the value of the task register. And once again, we see this sort of dichotomy of a thing that can only write to it is privileged, and the thing that can read from it is not privileged. So first things first, from this picture that is in the Intel manuals, we have to say that when we're talking about 64-bit systems, there's no such thing anymore as a task gate. This is just not a thing. So there is the task register, and the task register points at some TSS descriptor, which can only be found in the GDT according to the LTR. So even though this is just a segment selector and you would think that you know, it could have a zero or one for the table indicator to say GDT or LDT. No, the instruction that actually loads it says this must be in the GDT. So task gates, like I just said, reserved in 64-bit mode, so no more task gates. All right, looking at this another way, task register, selector, the hidden portion. So the selector selects from the GDT. It points at a TSS descriptor. When this register is loaded up, the table from memory will be consulted. It will fill in this cached portion so that it doesn't have to look it up from the table any further when it's trying to access the TSS. And so the base address will point at the bottom of this data structure and the segment limits at the top. So first of all, what does a TSS descriptor look like? Well, it looks exactly like the LDT descriptors that we saw a little while ago. So it has base addresses, which are spread out to support a 64-bit base address, so specifying a linear address somewhere in the memory space, and a segment limit, a 20-bit segment limit to say, you know, what is the limit here? But again, in 64-bit systems, limits aren't really cared about. All right, so now we've actually seen a couple more things from our system segment descriptor table. So TSS, 64-bit uh, TSS for available and busy, you don't really have to care about the available and busy. It just is a hardware mechanism that sets a bit to say whether or not uh, there is an access currently ongoing to the uh, TSS. All right, so then what does the TSS itself look like? Well, on 64-bit systems, it looks like this. We've got, first and foremost, a 64-bit value at the bottom called RSP0. And when an interrupt is occurring and changing state into ring zero, this is what's going to be used as the RSP. That's going to be used to decide where to throw stuff on the stack. So the kernel needs to set this up. This obviously needs to be in some kernel space location so that people can't tamper with it. And this is where state will be saved. If the processor was changing to ring one instead of ring zero, then this, this value would be used instead. 
And similarly, if it was changing to ring two, this value would be used instead. So these are the RSP values uh, that are used on transition to those rings. Now there's also this new element that is new for the x86-64 extensions called the interrupt stack table. And it's basically a list of seven possible values that are used for different interrupts. So different interrupts, when we look at the interrupt descriptor table in the next section, they can say, you know what, for my interrupt, I wanted to use the stack from here. And another one can say, I wanted to use the stack from here. So this is a new mechanism to allow a little more precision on a per interrupt basis than this, which would be used for everyone transitioning to a given ring level. Now, just for, you know, for curiosity's sake, to show what the old 32-bit and 16-bit values looked like uh, of TSS, this is basically just to show that previously it really was more like the name states, a task state segment, task state segment. So it was intending to save state about the tasks, including general purpose registers. So general purpose registers, segment registers, and then it still had these notions of stack information, so stack segment registers and so forth. And that goes all the way back to the 16-bit format from the original 8086s. So like we saw in the previous video, some sort of interrupt happens, then stack information gets pushed, then an IRET occurs, stack information gets popped. And so where does the TSS play into that? The TSS holds a pointer to the stack which is where the stack is going to be considered to start before that information gets pushed onto the stack. So TSS helps the hardware know where to actually push information. And that's why TSS is still required.